Joe Flores here from Community Alliance Church. One of the things I haven't minded about the stay-at-home order under this COVID-19 crisis is that it has given me the opportunity to catch up on a whole lot of books that I've been meaning to read but haven't quite gotten to. One of the things I really have minded, though, is that the normal habits of my routine have been thrown off by this abnormal schedule that we seem to all be on. Have you noticed the same thing in your life? Has there been some habit that has snuck in that you don't want in your life? This observation about habits and and my desire to read a little bit more right now has led me to read a book that was on my list for a while called Atomic Habits by James Clear. This book and a lot of the principles in it coincide with many principles in scripture. Number one, the author makes a distinction between outcome-based habits and identity-based habits. The author writes, Many people begin the process of changing their habits by focusing on what they want to achieve. This leads to outcome-based habits. The alternative is to build identity-based habits. With this approach, we start by focusing on who we wish to become. So what's the difference? Well, an outcome-based habit says, I want to lose 20 pounds. But an identity-based habit says, I want to be a healthy person. This matters because, as the author goes on to say, behavior that is incongruent with the self will not last. Put a little differently, you can't fake it till you make it if you're constantly just faking it. This means that the most long-lasting, enduring habits in our lives don't come from our motivation or our willpower, but they flow out of our identity. When Paul is having a discussion with the Ephesians about giving up some old desires and some old habits, he writes in Ephesians chapter 4, Put off your old self. Be made new in the attitudes of your mind and put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness. In Christ, we have a brand new identity. And out of that identity flow the righteous and holy things that we do. The second thing has to do with self-control. Why is it that we all have that friend who just never seems to make a bad financial decision or never seems to make a bad eating decision? Well, research seems to indicate that disciplined people are better at structuring their lives in a way that does not require heroic willpower and self-control. In other words, they spend less time in tempting situations. It seems these people take the old adage of work smarter, not harder, and modify it to self-control smarter, not harder. Because it's easier to practice self-restraint when you don't have to use it very often. These self-controlled people appear to be so self-controlled because they think in terms of how to remove the need for self-control. So instead of just resisting the donuts on the countertop, they put apples on the countertop instead. You know, sometimes we think that we need to be like Jesus in that we go out to the desert, we reach our weakest point, and then we stare down the temptation from Satan three times. But guess what? You're not Jesus. Neither am I. Paul writes this to the Corinthian church. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can endure it. Put differently, Self-controlling smarter, not harder, means not trying to overcome the habit or work your way through the temptation. It means looking for a way out. Number three has to do with the people in your life. The author writes, one of the most effective things you can do to build better habits is to join a culture where your desired behavior is the normal behavior. One church I worked at had a New Year's Eve dinner every New Year's Eve because many in the church struggle with alcoholism. The church tried to provide an environment on New Year's Eve when it would be tempting to drink that had the cultural norm of abstaining from alcohol. Proverbs 13.20 put it similarly. Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. The culture of your companions will reinforce your good habits as well as your bad habits. Well, going to church doesn't automatically make you a better person and it doesn't earn bonus points with God. It can and should help to influence your habits. It's about leveraging the power of the culture of companions to become the person that God has designed you to be. Are there any habits that you just haven't struggled with as much under this stay-at-home order? Could it be that being away from certain people right now has leveraged the power of the culture of companions to diminish 
your struggle with that habit. So that is some of the stuff that I'm learning right now. I hope it was helpful to you. If it was, would you be so kind as to give us a share in the comment section below? Also, share a book that you have been reading and one takeaway that you have gathered from that book that has helped you in your spiritual life. God bless. We hope to see you soon. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you wouldn't mind giving us a like, follow, and subscribe on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube accounts. Also, a share on Facebook could have a family or friend see this video too. We'd really appreciate that. All this information can be found in the description below or on our website at butlercac.org. We'll see you next time.